you should never use it for a very long period of time that can damage the lining of the nose and I would not recommend that. And we'll be talking about hay fever in this video in a quite chilled and relaxed fashion. I hope you've got your cup of tea. We'll cover what causes hay fever, why people get the symptoms, what the symptoms are, and most importantly at the end, we'll talk about the treatments that you can use at home and also medicines that can help you. Cheers. Hay fever is an overreaction of your body to pollen, which is produced by plants as part of their reproductive cycle. Thank you very much, high school biology. And importantly, once pollen goes into your nostrils, your body sends in the immune system. It hits all of the buzzers, emergency buzzers. They go in and overreact. They cause swelling, inflammation, irritation, and that may explain some of your symptoms that you may get. If you're allergic to tree pollen, your symptoms are likely to last from early spring to late spring. Grass pollen is late spring to summer. Weed pollen is early spring to autumn. In terms of the symptoms, I'm gonna list them all around me, but importantly, think about it as all of them are related to your immune system, causing inflammation, irritation in different parts of your body. So if it's in the nose, you're gonna get sneezing, runny nose, congestion. If it's in the throat, you may get a tickly feeling or a cough. If it's further down, sometimes people, especially if they've got asthma, they can get a bit of tightness, shortness of breath. Those are also common. Also important to remember that there are a few non-specific symptoms like headaches, tiredness, lethargy, facial pains that people also get with hay fever. In terms of tips for hay fever, there are some do's and don'ts to follow. Do put Vaseline around your nostrils. Vaseline helps capture the pollen before it goes into your nostril. Remember, if the pollen doesn't go in your nostril, then all of that immune reaction doesn't happen and your symptoms don't come on. Do wear wraparound sunglasses, which form a good seal around your eyes, meaning the pollen can't get inside won't come in contact with your eye and cause lots of irritation, watery eyes and those kind of things. You shower and change your clothes as soon as you've got in after you've been out. If the pollen count has been very high, it just gets rid of all the pollen that you may have come into contact with. The rest of the do's are staying indoors if you can, making sure the windows and everything else are shut so no pollen just sneaks in trying to get inside your nose. And also making sure that you vacuum regularly and you use a damp cloth to clean surfaces. Those pesky pollen, always trying to sneak up on you, man. Okay, onto the don'ts. I mean, fairly self-explanatory, but don't cut grass. Don't roll around in grass. Don't walk on grass. Just basically, grass is not your friend. Stay away from it if you can. Also, don't smoke grass. You know what I mean. Don't keep fresh flowers in the house. Flowers are also not your friends, and they can also have pollen. Smoking cigarettes can also irritate the linings, so Stay away from smokers, don't smoke yourself. Importantly, don't dry your clothes outside. If you put your clothes you know, on a, on a line right outside where there's lovely grass and the pollen count is high, you're likely to get loads of pollen on your clothes and you bring them inside, you wear it and it gets all up in your face and then you've got your allergies kicking in. So yeah, try and dry them inside if you can. The other tip is don't let your pets inside the house, especially if they've been running outside because they'll have pollen. I'm not sure what you're supposed to do with your pet by keeping it outside all the time. Depends what your pet is, I guess. You don't want to keep a hamster outside. It's just not going to be good. But you know what I mean. If they've been running around outside, they're going to be carrying pollen. Those pesky pollen are going to find you. Okay, so you follow that advice, but it just isn't working. And for some people, it won't. So you need some more help. And that's where the medicines come in. The first one to think about would be an antihistamine. Basically, anti-allergy tablet stops that immune response and all of the symptoms that come with it. Back in the day, anti-allergy tablets used to be quite sedating, meaning it made people a bit drowsy, but we've got newer ones that have come out that, are, that have less of a side effect on that side. So things like loratadine, cetirizine are actually quite good for allergy season. Very rarely, if they don't work for people, I will prescribe something called fexofenadine, which is an antihistamine that is on prescription. It tends to be a little bit stronger than the loratadine and the cytorazine, it's slightly more effective. If you're getting itchy eyes or runny eyes, irritated eyes, red eyes, any of those kind of things, then you can get eye drops that are a bit more specific for the symptoms. They're sodium chromoglycate eye drops and they tend to be quite effective if you're getting mainly eye symptoms. There are nasal nose symptoms that you're getting like congestion, runny nose, irritation, sneezing. Then there are a few different treatments to try. Uh, one thing would be saline irrigation, meaning salt water passing through the nasal system. You can also get decongestions for your nasals. 
that can help just break up anything that may be congesting them. All of those haven't worked. You can try steroid nasal spray, but the important thing I have to say about steroid nasal spray is you should never use it for a very long period of time that can damage the lining of the nose, and I would not recommend that. And for patients who've had very, very severe episodes and all of those things haven't worked, sometimes doctors will prescribe tablet steroids. And again, steroids are not very nice medications. You want to try and avoid them as much as you can, but that's just for you to know that there is that final step to help people. Love to know which treatments you have tried, which have worked for you, which haven't worked, and I'll be in the comments to have a look at those. Cheers. Hope you found this useful, and if you have and you want to see more videos like this, then please help the algorithm by hitting the like, the sub, and the bell so that you can send the next video I do next week straight to your eyeball. That sounds a bit scary, doesn't it? Just maybe just to your phone. It will just, it will just send it straight to your phone. I've been Dr. Khaled. You've been bloody awesome. I'll see you on the next video.